Good morning, everyone. As always, place a cross on first, no matter what's going on in your life. No matter what's going on in your life. I can't stress that enough. Well, before I pray today, I'm going to let you listen to a track I made. There's actually two songs and the one I made separate songs. One of the songs is called Armor On and the other is called Cross On First and I just combined them. And it's, a, it's not really a, a song with some verses. It's repetition because I believe that repetition is like gets it in your head. You understand? And I just want y'all to listen to, with, with the, listen to me. Listen to this song, I mean, for a moment. It's like six minutes, so bear with me, people. Bear with me. Whoa, it's a nice one right here. Let's see what we can do with this one. With the hip. But a holy ghost. I'm listening to it. With the hip. But a holy ghost. Keep that arm on. Keep that arm on. Keep that arm on. Keep that arm on. Something about that name, Jesus. Something about that name, Jesus. Stepping out the house with the Bible in my hand. The devil seen me and he ran. I'm stepping out the house with the Bible in my hand. The devil seen me and he ran. Run, devil, run. 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 solution to that. You can keep it going. And we're going to do that this time. Before I leave the house, I gotta 
day. Keep me on a narrow path, never go astray. God lead the way each and every day. Keep me on a narrow path, never go astray. God lead the way each and every day. Keep me on the narrow path, never go astray. God lead the way each and every day. Keep me on the narrow path, never go astray. God lead the way. Each and every day, keep me on a narrow path, never go astray. God lead the way. Each and every day, keep me on a narrow path, never go astray. Before I leave the house, I put my cross on first. Before I leave the house, I gotta read a bit first. Before I leave the house, I gotta put my cross on first. Before I leave the house, I gotta read a quick verse. ago people uh it's a reason why i say put your cross on first i don't know why the reason but years ago probably about five years ago i started doing videos when i met my wife on with right now and i started saying put your cross on first and it just stuck with me and i used to try to call myself by my name houston beard i try to come up with a rap name and stuff like that and god put in my mind foc follower of Christ so that's what I call myself and my name is actually Houston Beard Houston McCullum Beard Jr. but I'm from the south man we country and nobody calls me by Houston they always call me Houston they take the T out and they always call me Jr. so it's FOC Houston Jr. so I'm just wanting to break that down and that's what I God put in my mind to come up with you know, and I live that. I try my best to live that every day. I try to put my cross on every day. I try to keep my armor on every day. Rep repetition, repetition. Unless you do it, you're not going to get used to it. You understand? That's what I'm trying to spread to everybody else. Hey, put your cross on first every day. Put your armor on every day. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever amen well around 2009 2010 i was going through some dark times in my life i was raised in the church raised in it went religiously every sunday my mom used to take us to revival on school nights. We coming back at 11 o'clock. But I didn't really truly give my life over to Christ till like 2010. I'm 43 years old. I was in my 30s when I truly gave my life over to Christ. And I remember the verse, these verse, these two prayers right here hold near and dear to me for a number of reasons. But the main reason my mother gave me this prayer to rememorize when I first gave my life to Christ. Psalm 23. 
She was like, read Psalms 23. And she also told me to read Psalm 24 too. So I'm going to read those two today and let's see where this goes. This morning I was reading in the house. I couldn't stop crying. I know the Holy Spirit is working. So bear with me, people. If I tear up, it is what it is. Hopefully God let me read it all the way through. <laughs> Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I think about that. That don't seem like a regular prayer. Just think about this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. What does that mean? It's like, I trust in God. And he got me. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me besides the still waters. That's straightforward. He restores my soul. Think about that. When you give your life over to Jesus and you get baptized and you start a process of restoration, restoring your broken soul, your broken spirit, your evil self, God will start fixing that. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for, listen, his name's sake. I was listening to... Um, Dr. Charles, I can't remember his name, but listen to him this morning. It was like the dark things that you go through in life. He said, it's trying to transform you into the image of Christ. That's true. Everything you go through is trying to transform you into the image of Christ. Mm. So it's about him. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil. That tells you a lot right there. When you read that, like everybody know what it says, but nobody likes to go through it. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. That's why in the song I'm like, run, devil, run. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God keeps the devil at bay. And sometimes God allows the devil in. Just like Job. But as long as you trust in the Lord, you're good. I love this part. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You know, most people think, I can't wait till God rid me of all my enemies and bless me. Why does he have to do that? When he can just bless you right in front of him. You see, most Christians think one day you're going to wake up and you're going to have no more enemies, no more. <laughs> Everybody just going to be on your side. Why in the world would he say, sit down at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool? What does a footstool do? Help you step up. A lot of y'all want to run from battles and run from your enemies. And I've been there too. Just want to run, run. But I remember what the verse says, resist the devil and he will flee. So stand your ground. Thou anointest my head with all my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It's like a prayer for a constant direction to me that psalm 23 and the lord's prayer are neck and neck they are almost so similar to me and they quick and to the point but let's read 24 the earth is the lord's and the food is thereof the world and they that dwell therein but what, 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 what did god just say everything's mine you mine too mm -hmm. for he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? This is a, a answer to a question. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? Who can go to, who can go to heaven? It's going to tell you who's going to go to heaven. He that have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up his soul into vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face. Oh, I, I think our generation is the generation. I see so many people that are spreading the gospel. It's amazing. One thing about social media I love is the fact that people can just get on their phones and talk about their heavenly father. Glory be to God. This generation. We might have some messed up people in this generation, but we got some Holy Spirit filled people. I remember in Paul, one of the acts, he was like, Paul was like, he was like, go to here. Like, I got many people in this city. 
that have not lifted up their hands to vanity. You know, so it's a lot of people more than you think, but anyway, mm. lift up your hands, heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Mm -hmm. Behold, I stand at the door and knock, says the Lord. He's knocking at the door of your heart and the doors of your house, the doors of your workplace, the doors of your church. Mm -hmm. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts. Let me, let me, I'm not going to answer the scripture, but I'm going to just do something to you. Who is the king of glory? Jesus. <laughs> he is the king of glory. Hmm. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You know, anybody can be your enemy. You can be your own enemy. You can be your own enemy in this world. You know, but you got to understand when the Bible says your enemies. Whose enemies are they really? Not necessarily yours. He said they hated me first. So it's not the fact that they hate you. They actually probably more than likely hate God. <laughs> and God destroy, would destroy all his enemies. So guess what? If you live for God and you love God, he's going to destroy all yours. And sometimes he ain't going to even destroy them. He going to bless you right in front of them. Mm -hmm. He going to promote you right in front of them. He going to allow your cup to run over right in front of them. A lot of people are like, I'm just tired of all these enemies. You're getting stronger, people. And what somebody said, I heard this saying, the devil does not attack empty houses. Mm -hmm. The devil attacks people with a purpose. He don't attack his people because they already his. But he will attack you because he hates you. My uh, co-worker was showing me a video the other day, yesterday, about a cartoon that's coming to Amazon Prime. And the cartoon makes Lucifer the good guy. Wow. Wow. Even brings up Lilith, if you know anything about that. She's supposed to be the first wife of Adam. I believe it's a myth straight from the depths of hell. You understand? Because if it was there, it would have been in that Bible right there. But that's what a lot of sorcerers and Satanists and other people believe that Lucifer is here to help you. No, he helped his own. Lucifer cannot help me. All he can do is help me get stronger by throwing his darts and his enemies my way, which are God's enemies. And again, God will destroy all his enemies, and that's why you got to keep your cross on first. Just to think about that show I just told you. Some of y'all and some of our kids are going to watch that show and start believing the fact that Lucifer is the good guy. Well, I'm here to tell you, according to my Bible, Lucifer was good at one time, but now he didn't change his name mm -hmm. to Satan. <laughs> He's not as good as he once was. And that's a good example to tell us about everybody. God chose Lucifer. He was chosen, but then he lost. He fell short, made by God, just like us. We're made in the image of the most high God, and he's chosen each and every one of us. But in order to stay the course, you got to stay studied up. You got to stay prayed up. Because the enemy is trying to draw you back in with him. You remember you was, before you came to Christian, you had no cares in the world. Like you was more happy. At least that's what you think. And then you give your life to God and so many people turn on you. 
don't understand you no more. Mm. That's good. Mm. Because all people don't work for God. They work for the devil. Let me pause and I will continue.